What's good gamers? Holy One here, coming at you with my top 10 most played PC games. So starting off my list at number 10, we have Borderlands 2. And I have over 200 hours in Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 is probably one of my favorite in the franchise. I did really enjoy the first game, and Borderlands the pre-sequel was good, but it, in my opinion, was a bit too short. Borderlands 2 offers something very interesting with its villain, Handsome Jack, being this very dickish, um, bad guy with this very I'm a perfect complex, and it's your job to kill him all in the end. I've played this game most of my time pl playing over a LAN party with my younger brother or my friends. I also played it a lot on my 360 as well, back in the day. But Borderlands 2 is by far my favorite game when it comes to a first-person shooter. Not only is there tons of loot, but there's also tons of content in the game. With lots of really good DLCs. <clears throat> and lots of different classes you can pick from to build your own character. Allowing them to grow and gain new skills. And making them very devastating with certain different builds that you want to make. <clears throat> I would highly recommend picking up Borderlands 2 if you want to play with friends. Or if you own a console you can get this game and play split screen on the couch. Overall Borderlands 2 is an amazing first person shooter. And can offer varieties of difficulties along with different elements that can really challenge you as a gamer. So, that's my number 10, guys. I've had fond memories of playing this game for over 6, even 7 years at this point, And it still has great visuals and destructive physics on PC. Um, you could even pick it up on the Lunar Sale, which is still going on for around $5. So, definitely check out Borderlands 2. At number 9, I have Star Ocean The Last Hope 4K Remastered HD Edition. I've put over 243 hours in this game. The reason is, is because I really like the Star Ocean franchise, and I know a lot of people dislike Star Ocean The Last Hope, but I liked the game a lot when I played it back on the 360, and I've even 100%ed all the achievements in the game for the PC, and that takes a considerable amount of time. The game offers a lot of different combat options when it comes to um, an action JRPG, where your characters and combat is similar to that of t the Tales franchise. Um, the story is very long. It'll take at least 50 to 60 hours to beat. And there's different dialogue and character options. And the visuals still hold up today, even after, on this remastered. The game even did look visually stunning back when it released. On the PlayStation 3 and 360. And this HD remastered is still, very, is still done quite well. Now when it comes to... The overall... Length of the game... You could probably um close to um 50% the entire game in about 100 to 110 hours. So definitely give a look at Star Ocean: The Last Hope. The game is pretty good. You can get it um for twenty dollars. It's not that expensive. So if you want to try out a Japanese JRPG, definitely check this game out. The reason it's so high on my list is it's a considerable amount of time to get the 100% achievements in the game. So overall, it is still a pretty decent game to play. Moving up at number 8, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. And I am a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! fan. I have been I used to collect the cards when I was a kid. And uh, when this game popped up on Steam, I picked it up for $20. And I've put about 251 hours in the game. Um, me and my brother like to play this building different card decks. Um, different variety of... Um, card decks allow allows you to test the game. The game offers um, a story mode for each timeline of characters, as well as giving you different challenging modes to test your dueling skills. And it offers an online mode you can play against friends to try out your different decks. And with the amount of variety of cards in the game, I was able to sink so much time into the game itself. Um, and I preferred this over Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. I have also got all the achievements in this game for completing the game's many dual challenges, as well as multiplayer aspects so if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh and you like playing card games definitely check this game out it is very fun and you will definitely enjoy it and it's probably on sale on Steam right now so definitely check this game out and that is my number eight number seven we have Disgaea PC and this game was finally remastered and ported to PC and they titled it Disgaea PC and um I'm not the hugest Disgaea fan, but the first Disgaea is probably my favorite. I spent so much time, and I've spent about 263 hours in the game, 
and I've worked through getting all the achievements as well. Um, you could probably beat the story in about 30 hours, but the reason the game um, can grow, um, take up some of your time is the item world. The item dungeon is like, um, you can go in the item dungeon and constantly farm different weapons, items, and so on. And it can get pretty addicting, but it is enjoyable. So you can craft different items, skills, and enemies. And build up your arsenal to take to the main game itself. So if you want to pick up the sky, it's a good $20 game. It's got some funny humor in there. It is not demanding whatsoever to play. And you can pretty much play it on a toaster. So that is my number seven. At number six, we have Killing Floor 2. Another one of my favorite first-person shooter horde games. I have about 303 hours in this game. And I put that much time into... Com and to me, I considered this game complete after maxing out each character in the game. The game offers about 8 to 10 different classes. And it's a great horde mode if you just want to play with your friends and just kill mindless Zeds, which are the terms for zombies in the games. And there's each, and there's a different difficulty if you want to raise the difficulty of each horde if, that you play against. And it's a cheap $30 horde game. Uh, visuals are too amazing, but it is still a great game overall. And if you are if you like playing horde games similar to like Gears of War or something like that, definitely check out Killing Floor 2. It will def it's a great way to pass time if you like watching podcasts like myself. It's a great time killer. So definitely check out Killing Floor 2. At number 5, we have Sonic Adventure 2 HD. And I played this game back on the GameCube, and I've put about 323 hours in this game. And um, it's n a lot of people dislike the game. I just, I just think it's a great Sonic game, and most of the Sonic games nowadays, besides for Sonic Mania, have been very underwhelming. Um, this Sonic game is amazing, and what, what really made me put so much time into this game is the Chow Garden. The Chow Garden allows you to create different Chow and pit them up against each other in races or sumo wrestling. The game, the game also offers split screen where you can face off against your friends in local split screen, whether it's kart racing, shooting, having the Chow fight against each other. The game offers a lot of variety when it comes to the split screen versus mode. And the story is interesting and Shadow's one of my favorite characters in the Sonic franchise. So, Sonic Adventure 2 is definitely an interesting game. If you played on the GameCube, you might want to check this game out. So, um, you could definitely sink a lot of time into it. So, definitely give Sonic Adventure 2 a look. So, that's my number 5. At number 4, we have Neo, which is a Dark Souls-isk like game in taking place in the Warring States period of Haido, Japan. And I've put about 435 hours into this game. Neo is a great game. It was my game of the year for 2017. Not only did I beat every single new game plus of the game, I got all the achievements in the game, and the game is extraordinarily difficult. Not only does the game get more difficult with each new, new game plus you unlock, but you can have a variety of different builds you can make for the game, whether you want to use a sword, a sickle, or an axe. The game offers more variety than Dark Souls does, and that's what makes the game more difficult, because you can play to whatever strengths you have. So, playing Neo was a very excellent experience, and the story isn't bad at, at all. It takes, it basically, you're fighting the yokai and these mystical creatures, and you're a man hunting down his missing spirit from Europe. So, if you guys want a very challenging game and you like Dark Souls, definitely check out Neo. It is a phenomenal game. Alright, moving up to my next most played game, we have Monster Hunter World, which was my game of the year last year for 2018, and I've sunk about 736 hours in this game. Monster Hunter World is a phenomenal um, open self-open world monster hunting game. Um, it is the second Monster Hunter game I've played. The last game I played was Monster Hunter back on the PSP, which I thought was okay. So I, I'm not a huge hardcore Monster Hunter World fan, but the game is just like Neo. You have all these different builds you can make. Um, and the game can be challenging because you have to think about how you have to kill each monster and what I, what build you should go with, whether a longsword or anything like that. My personal build is using a longsword or a great axe. I just like slicing off the tails of the monsters. I think that is the most fun. And playing with my friends against these events is awesome. And Monster Hunter World constantly releases updates and new DLCs that are released for free. So it is a great value. You can get Monster Hunter World on, on Steam on sale. And the optimization is pretty good. I know some people are having issues with lower end systems. But the game does recommend using in GTX 1060. And I run on R RTX 2080. So... 
that's my current build for it but overall it is definitely worth the value you'll definitely get every penny out of it so definitely check out monster hunter world is my most played at number two we have team fortress 2 when i first got my first pc um build i immediately downloaded team fortress 2 and played the crap ton of it when i was in college team fortress 2 was just classic fun it was basically Overwatch before Overwatch, which most people compare it to. Um, and it still has a pretty good active player base. So if you just want to play a good and funny looking game, definitely check out Team Fortress 2. I've put about 790 hours in the game. So it is definitely a good game and it's free to play. And it's not hard to run whatsoever. Even on whatever PC build you might have. And my number one most played game on PC is Warframe. And I have played this game for 1100 hours. I have played this game for 1100 hours. Warframe had me addicted to the game. It was free to play. I, sp I didn't spend too much on the microtransactions. I spent maybe $80 at most. But the game has a lot of content. They're constantly adding content to the game. They had a content where you can run around. If you like a fast paced action game with like, like a Space Samurai Ninja, definitely check out Warframe. It is free to play. And it is probably one of the best free to plays on PC at the moment. I've currently stopped playing the game as I've grown bored of it. As you probably could tell, playing a game for 1,100 hours can definitely grow bored. But overall, it can run on pretty much any system you have. And it is, it might be an older game, but it still looks pretty good visually. So those are my top 10 most played PC games, guys. They may not be my most favorite games of all time on PC, but they're still the most I've put my time into. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is your boy, Holy One, out!